Okay, this one's a bit of a walk down memory lane. Uh, the old Electrophone CB550. Um, now, I've got a couple of these myself in the box like new and they're a great radio to keep, you know, just O2A chassis. Um, uh, this one's a little different though, uh, green display, so someone's done the mod uh, with the green display in there. Um, so, um, and this has been coupled up with a Leeson bass microphone. And uh, <clears throat> you either loved or hated the Leeson bass mics. Uh, this one uh, has the um, famous bar that's not broken, how's that, eh? And I'm just actually transmitting at the moment into a dummy load. One, two, three, four, five. Hello, test one, two, and I'm just going to drive... Yeah, you know, it's just it's just getting over, a little bit over what it should be, but um, the lock bar, there we go, does work. Amazing. <laughs> so many of these we saw we had to repair over the years. They were broken and terrible. And um, this is quite nice, this one. Um, the covers, you know, quite nice. Um, always look for the chrome top. And the reason I say that is I have over here a good example of what's not to buy. Um, now, here's a good example of... Um, no, the camera's got to get the right angle. It doesn't really show you how raised it is. Oh, it will. Hang on. Uh, I was going to get the light right. But across here, water's got underneath, or moisture, sorry, it's got underneath it. And you can see, you'll always see, because the knobs, have a look at the knobs on this, how beautiful they are. Um, that's had a bit of a Brenton clean, I get that. Um, but um, uh, when you see them, and they've almost like, it almost looks like rust, but it's just the fact that they've, but the moisture's got to them, and this whole front panel is um, extremely different. When you look at this, you see how it's bubbled all through there, right across. Now, here's a good one. Look at that, and the bo bottom and the sides are the same, etc. Uh, they'll get these little superficial scratches, of course, but when you get it to this stage, you're in big trouble. This is um, this is you know a bit of a chuck away radio, um, unfortunately. Uh, you can see where the front panel's lost a lot of its lettering, where this one's kept its lettering beautifully. Um, but look, you know, sort of, uh, uh, they are what they are. This was an 18 from memory. Yep. It's an 18. Uh, I must plug it in. I, I think it works. Uh, I reckon it does. Anyway. So that's, that's sort of some of the finer points of a CB550 to watch for, uh, condition of the knobs, condition of the, uh, top panel. Oh, the other thing, sorry, I'll bring the other one over for the sample. Notice how the sides here look so nice and they're, you know, that, that kind of vinyl finish that they had a feel of. Well, here's what happens to a bad one where, you know, once you get through that vinyl, uh, underneath it rusts out and you end up with a case that you can't actually bring back um, very well. Um, we've actually stripped them before and we've actually done, uh, re them. Uh, we've painted some of them too, but, you know, this is an extremely bad one where the, um, over here is probably even worse. You can see, look at the cover, see how it doesn't even fit properly. Now that's just kind of <laughs> rust has built up underneath the vinyl there. And you can see what happens to a bad one. Anyway, it's, it's good to be able to show you good and bad. And, you know, um, and look, this one's average. Um, this is not, um, I've got perfect ones of these. Um, and someone asked me the other day if I'd sell one. And I said no, um, <laughs> because I had, it took me too long to find it. Um, but this one's going to a mate of mine um, uh, down near Melbourne. Um, he's probably going mad with uh, COVID-19 and being uh, trapped in his home. Uh, but um, And he specifically wanted a... CB550 with a lease on bass mic on it and uh, uh, so all we've done is really given it a bit of a tune um, and um, just you know checked a few bits and pieces on it uh, and, and yeah look it's a nice radio um, receiver on it was pretty good actually uh, you know am I set up to show you that yes I am uh, so if I go back just play with my monitor which is um, 50 microvolts at S9 nice that's what we like to see what we like to see more is this check this out the receiver on this cybernet chassis i mean i have peaked and tuned it minus 130 dbm now um look i can do better than that don't get me wrong if i take it down to uh there's 0.158 okay now this is impressive i can still hear that at minus 133 dbm so minus uh, sorry 0 0.0501 of a microvolt and for a Solbinet Sassy, um, that's really nice. And as you can see, 0.1. But when I bring it to um, 0.5 of a microvolt, it is just stunning. It's it's not even a, a hint of noise. A no noise. <laughs> no, no noise. Get that word right? Yeah. Um, so the CB550, don't 
kid yourself, it is just a Simon X chassis. It's, you know, this one is just because we sat there and tuned and tuned and tuned, and we've really been able to, to get that receiver extremely hot. I think the um, mate of mine is going to be pretty happy with the fact that, you know, this thing's going to hear well. So they were, they were a normal sort of CB radio back in the day, you know, 1980s, I suppose. Um, you had your RF game, which really was an attenuator. When you flicked it up, as you can see, it's attenuated that signal. And if I show you with 50 microvolts, with less, less volume, and you'll see that see how it just attenuates that signal right down, and that's what it's doing. Useless. <laughs> Sorry, but useless. Um, <laughs> so really, I mean, don't get me wrong. If someone's 30 over 9 to you and you, you know, your receiver's starting to, you know, it might help you out. Noise blanker. Uh, and these were the models that did have the um, inbuilt SWR meter. So you could lock your thing on here. And um, if I just turn my mic, oh, hang on, go to AM would help too, sorry. Now, if I just turn that volume down, so you can set your calibrate like so. If you put it into calibrate, it would help more. So basically, calibrate was on that set position right, right there. So, well, that's not there, is it? Hang on. There is there. Okay, and then basically, down to SWR. And of course, we're in a dummy load, so it would be one to one. So, yep, yeah, look, they worked fine. Uh, don't get tricked though. Your S meter won't work when you're in the SWR position. So, you know, if you don't see anything happening on a chassis with an SWR meter, Cyber Net chassis, it'll be because you're just in the wrong position. And to show that, probably best to um, uh, put in 50 microvolts uh, and have a bit of a look at. Uh, oh, sorry, RF gain. Oh, what am I doing here? Sorry, guys. Right, okay, just anything really will show. There you go. So I've got a bit of signal in there, but it's not actually seeing it until I go back to the SRF um, area. And keep in mind that, you know, so when you're transmitting, um, this here will vary for your calibration. So that's only meant, that middle position is only meant to calibrate your SWR, your forward power, basically. So then you can look at your reflected power. So there you go. Um, but yeah, th these were these were great radios in their time. <clears throat> um Leasons, as I said, you either loved or hated them. This is a great example of one, though. Uh, I've got a bad example. Look at today. Today's all about good and bad examples. We had a bad example of the um, Electrophone CB550 in a good. Now, let me show you a bad example of a Leason microphone. And this is what happens with them. Um, over the years, moisture got to them, and that's what happens. Now, we'll do a rebuild of this one, and we'll choose to put this into black. Um, black is a much easier color to get them to come up with um, and then we you know paint the, the bottom section as well but um, yeah look and they did come out originally in black or the silver color so once again good and bad examples of both um, <clears throat> excuse me these are becoming quite collectible and worth probably you know 150 bucks every day of the week in that condition with the you know the bar and not needing painting um, the one over there that gets painted up I mean, that depends on, you know, just how it comes up. I, you know, look, maybe a hundred bucks, but, <clears throat> excuse me, but it is sort of interesting just to sort of um, find that when you're chasing through bits and pieces, go for this sort of stuff, go for the stuff that doesn't need work because generally, you know, that's going to be your investment and, you know, better value. So there you go, uh, CB550. Um, now, oh, I'll actually just show you something. Now, this does happen on old Cybernet switches. Um, now, We've cleaned this one. Now, just to show you what happens now, every now and again, and you'll get this. Um, now, I won't do it now. You'll get the, you, if you go back in the video, you'll notice the digit, just a little digit on the, uh, between the, on the two there that turns it into a three was just, there you go. Now, um, people say to me, you know, can you clean the switches? Well, we do. And, but some of them are getting that old now that they will get the odd time where that digit might drop. And I just tell people, um, you know, take the lid off, spray the switch with deoxid um, D5. Um, look, you really need to soak it because without pulling the switch wafers to bits, um, you know, <laughs> the reason you soak it is because you're really trying to get it into spots where it can't get into. But generally you will, you'll get it in there. And um, this switch is being cleaned. It's still got a slight, I can see just one little digit, um, you know, that every now and again is still giving an issue. Uh, don't panic about it. Every now and again, you might pull the cover. Look, generally, uh, 
rotate that switch 40 times, uh, 40, one for every channel. <laughs> but yeah, aggressively run that switch around and, you know, just do what I'm doing there and just, you know, flick it around, etc. cetera. Um, the more usage the switch gets, the better chance that it's going to actually find its contacts again and do like that. And look at that, you know, no issue. But you will start to see these on some of the old 40 channel switches where um, they won't, it doesn't interfere with the... Um, channel selection as such it's just the display connection uh that that ha happens on every now and again but i'm glad it happened to be able to show you because at least um uh and, and look i you know probably can't make it happen again at the moment but uh, they will do it from time to time so uh just another thing to be aware of and a little bit cautious of um i've already spoken to um my mate hob about this um and he understands <clears throat> excuse me um sorry the the question should be i suppose what would you do to fix it? You'd put another switch in, uh, a brand new switch. And, um, you know, and, and that's the problem is sometimes when you do that with a switch that's kind of working pretty well anyway, you, you're really adding probably another 100 bucks worth of value of cost, you know, to the radio. Well, actually, you're adding $100 worth of cost, but you're probably not adding $100 worth of value. So sometimes, you know, putting up with the odd little thing with some of these old chassis is, is easier uh, than, you know, putting out extra money that is never going to be, a, you know, reobtainable when, when you go to sell it. Uh, no one's going to pay you an extra 100 bucks because you put another 40 channel switch in it. Unfortunately, be nice. But anyway, all right. Well, look, um, I'm a little better today, by the way. I got a couple of things done, uh, which is great. I uh, was in bed till about, um, well, I got up from, what did I get up? I got up from about probably um, 10 o'clock through to about 1. No, it wasn't even that, probably about 12. And then I took a bit of a siesta till about 2, but then got a second wind. Uh, a VK2 mate of mine, Rob, rang me, and he must have given me some inspiration to get moving because I've actually got a bit done since then. So uh, anyway... All right, well, that's the Electrophone TX550 with the lease on TW232. Um, uh, these are, you know, modest examples of them, by the way. Um, I have better, but I just thought it would be nice to sort of have a look at one that's that's real. Um, you know, this is, and, and as I said, we've, we've had a look at the, the junk bits that you can buy, which I suggest you don't, um, unless you're just buying them like me for spares, which is, you know, handy uh, sometimes. All right, all the best to you from VK3, Charlie Mike, and JDW229. And uh, there you go, one standard uh, 40 channel CB550, no extras, no nothing, sorry, <laughs> just just as they made it, which is, you know, probably the best value that you're going to find as far as investment these days. 73s from VK3CM, JDW229, all the best.